Hi and welcome everyone to the Human to Our Heart Code is Easy session by Mr. Tom Hendrickson. And we're glad, uh, Tom, that you could be, us, uh, be with us today. And without any further delay, over to you, Tom. Good luck. All right. Thank you, Malika. Appreciate the introduction. Like Malika said, we're going to talk about Human to Hard Code is Easy. But before we jump in, I'd like to get to know you guys a little better. See, we've got a few people jumping on. So if you guys feel free, so I want to make this as interactive as possible and feel free as comfortable as you want to be. So we have the chat. If you want to put things in the chat or feel free to, to come off mute and, and, and talk, you can do either one. So just to kind of get started, but let's talk about if you had a question for you guys, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? One superpower. So maybe it's time travel, you know, feel free. Like I said, put that in the chat or come off mute. Uh, so I think uh, uh, during the webinar, uh, the attendees can't unmute themselves. So oh, okay. if you would like to speak, just raise your hand and I will do that for you. Yeah. Thank you, Malika. Yes. So like I said, feel free to share in the chat, I guess, or raise your hand. What if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Ah, Shwini, time travel. That would be nice. Writing bug-free code, Vikram. Yes, yes, that would be good. <laughs> Not that I would ever write a bug. Just kidding, of course. <laughs> That's good, Vikram. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. Does anybody else have want to have a superpower? Making everyone think positively. That's good, Vinay. Fly, teleportation. Look, <laughs> yes. Yes, teleportation. Especially that'd be good now. And in our time of a, a pandemic, right? Yes, seriously. <laughs> it would be amazing. Awesome. So one, a couple other questions and we'll jump in, but how long, if you guys want to share in chat or like I said, uh, raise your hand, how long have you guys worked in the Agile space? Because we're here at the Agile India conference. So, so tell us that and I'll put my answer here in chat 10. Yep. Ashwini, 10 years, plus years. Yep. Three plus, yeah, five months. That's good. Yeah, it's good. We can have a, a good range of people here. That's excellent. Excellent. Awesome. 10 plus years, Vikram. Yeah. So we have a lot of good experience here. Two years. Good. All right. So one other question and we'll jump in. And this is, I want, I want to constrain you guys. So you can come off mute and say this, but I want to give you one word answers. See if you can do this. I'll, I'll, if you pay extra, I'll let you do two words. Just kidding. If you need to do more, you can, but try to do one. So this is the question I want you guys to try to answer. What makes people successful in agile? Mindset. Good. Yeah. Flexibility, Ashwini. You know, that's funny. You said that. I was just thinking what, like what, how I would answer. And I, I think I was thinking flexibility. So that's very good. But yeah, let's see. Does anybody else have a, a word or maybe two words? Learn from failures. Yes, Vikram, that's true. Adaptability. Yeah, very good. Very good. Lots of good stuff. Well, excellent. Very good. Well, it's good to kind of get to know you guys a little bit. So just to kind of give you guys a little overview. So I'm going to go into about, about 15 minutes of presentation here. Then we have some more questions and then we'll do a little bit more presentation and we have a few more questions and we'll wrap up from there. So just to kind of give you guys an overview of what we're going to go over here. So like Malika said, this is humans are hard. Code is easy. Here's a string of thoughts that ran across my mind early in my programming career. Why can't people just leave me alone and I can do my work? I can figure this out myself. I don't need others' help or any input to turn this thing around. Why don't people understand me? I think it must be they're just dumb. They don't recognize genius when they see it. Perhaps you've been there too. A frustrated developer who feels like they know enough. However, the success you thought you'd have is out of reach. You see others 
who make better strides, but why? Is it a skills gap? I want to share with you how I learned about my skills gap. Java, check. Linux, check. SQL, check. Humans, what? Humans are hard. Code is easy. So I focus on the technology. One of my first mentors was a database administrator named Doyle. He really knew his stuff, but wouldn't say much. That can make learning challenging. One thing Doyle would do is fix the problem for me. Doyle would fix it so quickly and then leave. What did you do? He was already gone. Working with Doyle gave me some insight. Technical people hate explaining basic stuff. Ask them a simple question and they will flip the bozo bit on you. What is the bozo bit you say? A few years after working with Doyle, I got to work with a software architect named Corey. He had many interesting observations. One thing Corey would do if you asked him a, a stupid question, you know, one that you could have answered by doing some research on your own, he wouldn't answer your question or work with you. That is the bozo bit. Bozo, of course, refers to bozo the clown bit in reference to computer bit or binary storage. Humans are hard, code is easy. Corey was a very difficult person to work with, but many developers can be that way. To gain respect from those developers, we need to know the technology. Humans are hard, code is easy. So I focused on the coding. I learned new technologies. I tried to keep my head down and avoid getting the bozo bit flipped on me. A few years later, I transitioned into a new job, technical lead. One year during my annual evaluation, my leader said to me, Tom, we think you have solid credentials. Coding skills got you the job, but we need you to develop other skills. My leader shared with me where I was failing, delegation. He shared how I wasn't delegating work to my teammates. Case in point, there was an upgrade that needed to be done. I did the work in 10 minutes or so. To explain that to a few teammates would have taken twice that amount of time or more. Another trap I fell into with delegation is the belief in our value. We can convince ourselves that we are worth more when others can't do the same work as us. I remember working with Jamie the first time. I wasn't quite sure he understood what we were doing. He was always done quickly. Then I finally asked him. Here he had created a script to deploy changes and update dependencies. Oh, I was doing this all manually. I was worried about delegation and the people I worked with had better ideas. Perhaps I didn't know everything I thought I did. A few years later, I got to work with a leader named John. We knew each other through a mutual friend. I had begun to coach individuals and teams. John wanted an outside resource to help him change his team's mindset. He shared how most IT people work with others in a transactional fashion. We get the requirements and we solve the issue. John said, Tom, my team is like bank tellers. They get asked to fix something and they do, just like a teller gets a check and deposits a check. I want my team to be more like financial planners. A financial planner builds a relationship, then they can anticipate needs. So you're saying, John, you want your team to have better relationships with their customers? John said, Tom, if they have better relationships, they will develop empathy and understanding. Relationships, understanding and empathy, huh? That won't work. That's what I thought at the time, but I was wrong. John knew his team was in his understanding and as empathetic as he'd hoped they'd be. He began requiring them to talk to the community directors when they travel. These conversations helped them empathize. Instead of just fixing the problem, they fostered relationships too. Each little change John made helped his team understand. The community directors had many things on their plate. These conversations also worked the other way too. The community directors began to give John's team space. If something went wrong, they trusted them to resolve it. John proved me wrong. He overcame his deficit by being curious and empathetic. He was able to change the way his team interacted with the organization. So much so that he has since been given additional responsibilities. From bank tellers to financial planners, he remade the image of his IT team. 
This brings me to my main idea. Coding skills got you the job. Influence will get you the career. Coding skills got you the job. Influence will get you the career. What do I mean? Developers are focusing on technology skills only. If we truly want to set ourselves apart, we need to know how to influence and collaborate with teams. Gone are the days when we could just send in the requirements with pizza and out pops code. Organizations are looking for more from their developers. The problem, my problem, was I was terrible at relationships. I had confirmation. I had proof. I didn't start out as a developer, though. My first stop in my professional career was quite different. My first job out of college, it seems like yesterday, I started at Wallace. What is Wallace, you say? We sold business forms and office supplies in Des Moines, Iowa, kind of like Dunder Mifflin. Armed with a business management degree and no real idea, I had three job options when I graduated from college. I could sell insurance or I could sell life insurance or I could sell business forms. So I did what any sane person would do. I sold business forms. Who wants to call on her friend's parents for insurance anyways? Did I mention that Des Moines, Iowa is the insurance capital of the world? Back to my first day at Wallace. Can you believe I had to make a few cold calls before lunch? Let me remind you in college, the only time I called my friends was when we were having a kegger. Getting people to buy business forms is a bit more difficult than getting college students to drink beer. Now, I really didn't want to make those calls, but lunch was getting close. I was given three prospects from another sales representative to call on. Hello, is uh, Mike Huff available? Yeah, can you tell him that Tom Henriksen called? Yeah, I'm from, I'm from Wallace. Click. <sighs> Hello, this is Tom Henriksen, your new Wallace representative. Oh, sorry, Mr. Hagna. I apologize if our labels fall off your product. Click. Whoa. <laughs> I guess we got disconnected there. Okay, just one more and we can go to lunch. What? Do we call on gentlemen's clubs? My coworkers all die laughing. Turns out this is their way of initiating new sales representatives. My sales career went down in flames pretty quickly. Similar to Tommy Boy, my sales techniques were not appreciated. Soon after my first day in sales, I started to realize this wasn't going anywhere. A friend of mine from high school shared with me the opportunity in technology, so I began to pursue a different path and get a new degree. I left my job in sales and began work as a developer. Now, working as a developer is quite a bit different than working in sales. The sales office I worked in was always full of people talking. They would be talking on the phones to customers or talking to each other. The developers I worked with, well, they were a quiet bunch on the whole. Friday afternoon in the sales office, the newest rep had to go get beer for everyone. Friday afternoon with the developers was quiet, just like the rest of the week. Now, perhaps it's starting to sound like I didn't want to make this change, but that was not the case. I slowly began to realize I was more Spock than Jimmy Fallon. The quiet, contemplative work of a developer suited me more. As my software career began, I started to work in a lot of different technologies, many of them old at the time. I wanted to move into something more current. I began to hear a lot of buzz around the Java language. In my free time and nights and weekends, I would read and work through tutorials. All this work paid off a few months later when a company leader came to me and said, Tom, would you be able to help Dave with a new application? Turned out they needed someone who could write an application using Java. I, of course, agreed. Like Luke, beginning to use the force. I was starting with some basics. As my Java skills began to improve from experience, I learned a few other things, too. I began to work with someone who was quite sharp from a technical perspective.
But Eric wasn't easy to get along with. He would yell at people he worked with. You might say he was a complete jerk sometimes. The managers and team allowed this to happen in a large part because he was productive. I can still see it now when I close my eyes. Eric was a smoker and he was trying to quit, which made him even testier. Eric and Sri were working together on some files when I came walking down a row of cubes and I could see Eric in Sri's cube yelling. You know how people get mad and their veins look like they're gonna pop out of their head? Eric's veins were about ready to explode. Then he ran out the door. I guess he needed a smoke. I asked Sri if he was okay. He said he was okay and then looked at me and said, but no one should have to put up with him. Sri couldn't have been more correct. Eric was a tyrant who ran around like Darth Vader intimidating people. And we all put up with his terrible treatment just because he was able to code a lot. Even though developers act like Spock, we have feelings too. I would like to tell you that Eric was let go and the team was able to move on. The company did nothing to him. His behavior was left on handle. If you work with a coding hero like Eric, they might take all the tough work and make it easier for others. But this can stunt the overall growth of the group. If you work with a coding hero and they take vacation, things can fall apart. Let me tell you a story about a leader who dealt with a similar issue. Now, Ben was a leader that I worked with and he, he had a coding hero. We'll call him Dave. Dave would code solutions that were more complex than others could understand. Dave was coming up on a milestone birthday. To celebrate, he was gonna bike across multiple states with all his gear. So he took off three weeks. Now, Ben knew this was gonna be an issue. So he met with the team and they discussed the challenges. The team decided to begin to have knowledge transfer sessions with Dave. Ben helped foster this collaboration. This also enabled the team to become more resilient. Ben helped foster this collaboration with the team and the team was able to slowly chip away at the knowledge gap. My next stop, I began to master my skills in Java. I was responsible for a new application that required me to learn some new technologies. Software development can be a bit like trending song sales on iTunes. One day something's hot, the next day it's out of date. During this time in my career, many open source tools became popular. Mastery for Luke Skywalker came after a battle with Darth Vader. Programmers have small battles each day. Software development is a lot like writing. As the author Stephen Pressfield says, the amateur tweets, the pro works. Professional programmers show up every day and slay small demons. Now, the first skill I needed to master as a developer was debugging. Of course, today the tools are much more mature. One of the first applications I had to debug didn't have any such tools. I was armed with print statements in a log file, quite primitive by today's standards. All right, let's see, where is that value being set? All right, let's add a print statement, recompile. Oh, compile error, I forgot the semicolon. All right, recompile, run the report. No, the database isn't set up right. Ah, okay, let me update that table, run the report, tail the log. Ah, now that looks better. Of course, debugging is so much easier today, but we still need to use the old bean. As Steve McConnell points out in his book, Code Complete, we need to learn the types of mistakes we make. Early in my Java career, I made the same mistake time and again. I would forget to initialize my variables. I can still hear my coworker, Ken, laughing at me when he would look at my code and point out my obvious error. We need to take a step back and reflect on how we are doing. How can I improve my coding, debugging, and testing? Ah, software developers ah, like to impress each other. I had to use a singleton pattern to fix that. Don't worry, most developers don't know what that means either. In the book, Essentialism, Greg McEwen shares how important editing is to journalism. In the journalists bring the ideas and write up the stories, but the editor has the important job. They review the piece and rework it. Over my years, I've mentored many developers, but one sticks out. He began reading about code basics. This made him add unnecessary code from time to time. I remember debugging an error he was getting together when I asked him, why, why is this loop here? He looked at me unsure and then said, ah, uh, 
I don't know. I thought it would help. He thought it would help. Once we removed his unnecessary loop, we resolved his error. Adding code is easy. Knowing what to keep is hard. Now, it's not that I'm saying computer science basics are not important. We need to master these too. However, if we put our sole focus on them, our careers will falter. I spoke before about Eric. He had mastered computer science basics. His teammates, though, couldn't stand him. We need to be good at our work and get along with our team. If we do just one of these, we aren't doing our job. All right. That is part one of Humans Are Hard, Code is Easy. I'm going to pause, see if there's any, if anybody has any questions, feel free to share them in the chat. So we spoke a little bit about professional relationships there. Now you heard early in the presentation there, I talked about John. Now he talked to kind of help me learn about the importance of relationships and how important they are, that it's not just be it code or, you know, some of the agile techniques we know, but we have to really pay attention to those relationships. They're very important. So if you guys want to share in the chat or if you want to raise your hand, uh, Malika can let you come off. But I want you to help me help answer this question. How have you fostered professional relationships in your career? So feel free to share that or in chat or like, like I said, you can raise your hand. I think Malika can let you uh, come off mute. So the question is, how have you fostered professional relationships? So we, we learned a little bit about John. He kind of helped me understand the importance of those relationships, especially in the agile world that you guys all operate in. Those relationships are very important. So what are some things that you guys do to help foster those relationships? So for instance, you guys are here at the Agile India Conference, a great way to you know, interact with people outside of your company and, 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 and work and find new relationships. Or maybe there's somebody here at the conference that you've worked with before Great to kind of reconnect um, and talk with them, especially, you know, living in our remote world where we're all on Zoom or WebEx. So what are some things you guys have done to help foster those professional relationships? Network with teams outside the org, understand their style of working challenges. Yes, that's good, Ashwini. So like you mentioned there, understand their style of working. That's important, isn't it? We need to know that we're all kind of, you know, we all have a little different personalities and preferences, don't we? That's good. Keeping pace with tech comes challenge. Relationships really get difficult. Yeah, they can get difficult, can't they? But there's there's ways we can we can get around that though. I think, especially like like Mole said, the meetups, if we have different things we can do, like coming to a conference like this. So now you guys heard earlier there, I talked about going through a career transition. As you heard, I started in sales and kind of trans referred into technology. Um, have you guys, I guess I want to ask you guys, maybe some of you have been in the same career path the whole time, but what sort of career transitions have you made? Have you made any? Uh, I know Malika and I were talking earlier um, that Malika has started in quality assurance. You know, I talked to different people who kind of make those different transitions. Understandable, not like a puzzle. Then yay, that's a, that's a good question. How can we inspire a developer to write code understandable, not like a puzzle? Yes, that's a good question. So I think that's that's a really good thing. I guess one of the things I would ask you, Vignette, is how how do you guys how do you guys mentor developers? I think that would be the the question I ask. You know, as we think about how we think about what type of code are you doing? Anything like a pair programming? Do you do code reviews? I guess those are the questions I would ask there, Vignette, but maybe some other people have some ideas or, or questions to inspire um, understandable code. I guess, and that's uh, another thing, Vignette, we're gonna talk a little bit about this here in a little bit, but clarity and communication is important. So understandable code to you might mean different things than say me or some other um, technology people. So it's, it's important to be clear in that communication. So Malika, you have there talking about my experiences and listening to other people's experience to learn more about, about them as people. Yeah, that's important, isn't it? Kind of understand what, what people like, what they, you know, what their preferences are, what, maybe what their, what their uh, you know, personal life is like. Maybe they're going through, they're having a tough time. Maybe they have some sick family or something that we can kind of have that understanding. So that's important. All right. 
So maybe Vignette, we can talk more about that if you have some other questions, but I think that's, like I said, being clear with the communication and then, yeah, conversations outside of meeting to bond. With you. That's really good, Ashwini, because a lot of times we get into meetings, we just want to talk business, don't we? But if we can have that time outside to just have kind of a chat, you know, something a little informal. And I think a lot of times that's tough, isn't it, with our, our personal um, world where we're in the pandemic, where we just want to, we just want to do our meetings and, and then, you know, we don't interact like we do. Like if we'd be in an office together, we might, oh, we just might have a chat or talk about, oh, what's, what are you doing this weekend? Or, or just to kind of get to know people. All right, one question here that we can. So one of the things I think it's very important to do, especially in your agile journey is how do you mentor people, other agile people? So I put that question in the chat, feel free to chat, uh, share that in the chat, or you can raise your hand and come off mute. Um, but I think those are important things that we, we need to have mentors when we go across or along our agile journey. But then we too also need to always kind of look back and mentor people who are coming up in the agile space and, and help them. So what are some things, uh, you know, obviously there's probably things here I'm guessing you can do at the Agile India conference to help mentor some other people. Um, but what are some things you guys do? So, so I'll, I can maybe talk about this one thing my team does. So every time, so since it's a small team, we have, we have a lot of people coming in and leaving a lot. So every time a new person joins the team, the last person to have joined the team trains them on everything that this team does. So yeah. that's very good. That's like the last person that joins since they're not yet very new still, they join, uh, they, they learn a lot as well with mm -hmm. that process. So that's something I've learned is something that can be done. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good, Malika. Cause I think like just that whole idea of learning and then um, yeah. teaching, I know in Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits for Highly Effective People, yeah. he talks about how you learn something, but the best way to master it is to teach it. So exactly. to kind of reinforce what you're talking about, Malika, is that, okay, I, I know this team, I just joined, I'm going to teach it to, maybe it's Malika, you're the new person, I teach it to you. That reinforces my learning, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. It's so really good. we have uh, Ashwini here who's raised their hand. I'll allow you to talk. Um, sure, sure. Great. Uh, so in my that? earlier organization, one initiative that we had uh, named as Coding Kata. So mm. we're in... Uh, we used to have a common problem statement given to multiple developers. Every developer, not every developer, I should say, it used to be a pair programming kind of activity, wherein uh, people used to develop different solutions uh, in pairs. And at the end of the program, we used to share the solutions with each other. And uh, it was kind of a presentation wherein we used to talk about what are what all different solutions are possible for the same problem statement. And uh, then, you know, based on that, you would uh, see how differently people are thinking, what different design patterns are evolving from the same problem statement. So I think that was a good way of learning um, by discussing with other Mets also. Yeah, that's really good, Ashwini. And I think part of that, like you talk about these code katas might help for a person like, like um, was it, uh, was it Vignet who talked about co understandable code? So I think Ashwini, if you have like something like a code kata, maybe, yeah. Those can lead to conversations around, oh, you know, these are our coding practices, you know, and maybe the mm -hmm. team has uh, an agreement that, you know, this is how, you know, certain things that they look for in their code before it's checked in or before, you know, it has to be uh, peer reviewed or, or peer programmed, yeah. or maybe that you guys do mop, you know, just, but those are good questions to kind of help start, you know, okay, I see this part here. It's not really understandable. Could you maybe rework this? So it's clear or, you know, that's really good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. All right, anyone else? I think we just have one more uh, comment in the, in the Q and A section. Um, would you like me to read it out? Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, most of the developers right go to impress. Try to use other things. Uh, the, try to use those things others cannot understand. Even I followed the same for some time. From when I started as Scrum Master, I understand the pain. So. That's, uh, yeah, someone actually read it. It says anonymous attendee. I'm not sure why. So, so can, you, can you repeat the question? It was hard to hear you there. Uh, it's not a question. It was uh, just, just someone. Just a comment? Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Very good. Very good. All right. 
Well, I think we're right at the point. So I'm going to jump back into the second part. It's going to take a few minutes and then we'll wrap it up with a few more questions um, to kind of keep us going. So sound good, Malika? Excellent. All right. So this is part two of Humans Are Hard. Code is easy. As I learned more about soft skills, my career progressed, starting out as a developer, then I moved into a senior developer role. Next, I became a technical lead, and finally, I moved into manager of software development. I was really feeling good about my career progression. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a Friday morning in May. I came in to work at my normal time, a little before 8 a.m. Oddly enough, my boss was in. He usually came in at nine or after. Anyways, I sat down and unpacked my things. Then Scott, my boss, came to my desk and said, Tom, can I talk with you? I said, sure. And I followed him to his office. Although when he took him to his office, he took a right instead. Hmm, that's strange as I thought as I followed Scott down the hallway. Then he took a left into Sandy's office. Who is Sandy, you ask? Well, she was the director of human resources. We sat down and then Scott looked at me and said, Tom, this is your last day here. If you've ever had that said to you at work or in a relationship, you know what it feels like. The rest was strange as I felt a calm come over me. I knew something was going to happen. Although as I looked across the table, I could tell Scott and Sandy felt terrible. They discussed the next steps. I packed my things and left. Getting fired gives us a good chance to reflect. What did we do wrong? How could this been avoided? As I looked back, I realized one lesson first. What led to this was a lack of clarity. I didn't execute accordingly. And my, therefore, the team I led didn't execute properly. I needed to ask better questions. This helped me move forward, but we can get frustrated and want to blame others. The second lesson I learned was the importance of relationship management. As I began to reach out to my connections, the opportunities were plentiful. So even in a trying time, like getting fired, can be a moment for learning. Those painful times can be full of wisdom if we take the time to unpack it. Mastering basic skills requires guidance. Early in my career, I worked with Wei. He instilled into me a systemic approach that I still use today. Software development is essentially problem solving. Wei saw though, oftentimes I was trying to solve five things at once. Wei's guidance was brought clear to me a few years later when I attended a seminar. At Michael Hyatt's Best Year Ever conference, he discussed goal setting. Michael said, detailed plans are great if you're building a nuclear submarine. He continued, for everything else, just focus on the next step. Wei and Michael agreed on this point. Don't overthink it. In Proverbs, it is said in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Luke's journey first brought him to Obi-Wan Kenobi, where he learned some basics, similar to what I learned from Wei. He kept learning, and so have I. Reflection doesn't come easy for me. I want to move on to the next thing. In David Marquis' book, Leadership is Language, he details the red work, the doing, and the blue work, the thinking. In the book, he discusses how important they both are to making progress. The workers, in the, he talks about how the Industrial Revolution, where the workers did the red work and the managers did the blue work. Today, knowledge workers must do both. A simple pause can give us a chance to step back and reflect. How can I or we do this better? Think, apply, reflect. By now, you're starting to think, Tom, <laughs> I'm a developer. I don't need no stinking soft skills. Of course, if you don't want your career to get better, keep on keeping on. My career path has changed dramatically as I've learned the importance of communication, relationships, and influence. Let's explore three core soft skills. These will set the stage for a career transformation. So remember, coding skills got you the job, influence will get you the career. Number one, communication. Listen 
to what is being said, ask good questions and seek clarity. Developers who do this write better code. They don't assume they know the answer. In the book, The Pragmatic Programmer, Andy Hunt and Dave Thomas talk about the importance of digging for requirements. We need to look between the lines. Part of communication is knowing your message. I've opened my mouth too many times in my career, just started talking, talking, talking. Know what you want to say and say it. Number two, influence. In How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie describes how we need to talk in terms of the other person's interest. Now, I have to confess, I once tried to convince a corporate vice president we should use a new technology, but he wasn't interested at all. However, the next time I spoke to him, I aligned a technical change with a corporate objective. The outcome of that conversation was quite different. Number three of the three core soft skills is leading change. When we want to lead a change, we need to share the vision. A few years ago, I was fortunate to work with a sharp product owner named Nakia. We began working together in an application for customer service representatives. As we began, our team really struggled with understanding the vision. That's when Nakia decided we needed a field trip. She had the entire team spend a day with those customer service representatives. We got to see their struggles. Nakia was able to lead a change by connecting and sharing the vision with the team. And the team came back energized and with a better understanding. These three core soft skills can change your career. Let me share a quick story about how you can use them yourself. In my first role as a manager, I tried to get to know the team. This can help build trust and influence with them. But perhaps you're starting to think, Tom, this won't work for me. Let me tell you about AJ. His path was a rocky one. AJ was a strong developer, but he rarely talked. He worked in a slow, methodical fashion and always kept his emotions in check. Over time, his teammates became irritated with his style. I tried to get to know him. For instance, we connected on a few things. AJ traveled to Germany to pick up his new BMW. He was quite excited about that. Still, his unwillingness to communicate with others, and especially the product owner, was wearing thin. That's when my manager came to me and said, Tom, it is time for AJ to decide if he wants to be part of the team. My manager asked me to put AJ on a PIP or performance improvement plan. I had 60 days to help him improve or else. Despite AJ's strong coding skills, his career was on a downward trajectory. When I met with AJ and explained the situation, he began yelling at me and stormed out of the meeting. The first two weeks after this incident were really scary. I kept checking in with AJ daily. I knew he was an introvert and he needed his space and time. Eventually, AJ and I sat down and discussed the PIP and how it made him feel. That's when I got AJ to agree to try some experiments. We met as a team and created some working agreements. These clarified everyone's role. Also, it stated how we would work together. I got the product owner to give AJ one final shot. In the end, we were able to give AJ the space he needed. Through coaching him and his teammates, we worked through it. AJ was able to develop the soft skills he needed to change his career direction. I was able to communicate and influence the team using the three core soft skills. I learned how to help AJ, myself, and others. You can do this too. Coding is important, but it's not enough. We can keep our head down and bozo it through our career, but that won't get us where we want to go. Relationships matter. Empathy and understanding matter. Communication matters. Practicing these soft skills give you more influence. Better collaboration with your coworkers, people seeking out your opinion as an expert, managers choosing you for the most exciting projects. Practicing soft skills is how you code the future of your dreams. All right, that is the end of our presentation. Any questions? And I see Mahesh has one there. What are the three soft skills? Communication, relationships, and influence. Those are the three that we covered there. So you bet, you bet. So as you heard in there, 
I had a little bit, and I think we just have a few minutes left. So we'll just maybe do one, we'll do one quick kind of wrap up question here. So, so as you hear in there, we've talked a little bit about some soft skills. So, so if you guys want to share in the chat or feel free to raise your hand, um, what are some things you've done to help work on your soft skills? So I know there's a lot of different things you can do um, to do that, but if there's anything you guys want to share, like I said, share in the chat or raise your hand and then Malika can let you come off mute. Self-awareness. Yes. That is very good, isn't it? That's a good place to start. Yeah, sometimes we can we can think we're we're one way, but if it's not aligned with reality, my gosh, that's that's so true. So very good point. Feedback from you know, nears and dears and well wishers. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's good that feedback from we have to get it from the right people, don't we? That's true. Very good stuff. All right. Well, I think we're about ready to end it here. I know you guys probably want to get to the other sessions. This is so good. I really appreciate the chance to be here. Thank you for Amalika for kind of assisting here and doing this. So appreciate it. It's great to be here at the Agile India, India Conference. And I really appreciate everyone coming to visit. Thank you so much, Tom. That was an uh, extremely interesting session. Yeah. Thanks everyone for being here and thank you so much Tom for sharing your experience.